Salut tout le monde. Hello everybody. Sorry, I didn't mean to surprise you by speaking two languages. Uh, would you prefer I do my speech in French? I guess I could because we live in Quebec, where the main language is recognized as being French. But to be fair, I will present in English because, after all, we are in an English school, right? Ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, today I will bring to light the major differences that separate Frenchies from English squareheads. But more importantly, I will show how we are stronger together and how Quebec is the beauty that comes out from this mix of cultures. When we look at Montreal, the biggest city of the province of Quebec, we see a great mix of cultures, including Italians, Greeks, Indians, Asians, Haitians, and many others. So why do we find a conflict in this melting pot of cultures? Well, Anglophones and Francophones have been in conflict for hundreds of years, first starting off with the proximity of England and France and Europe, the Seven Year War, the War for the New World and the numerous colonies, uh, including New France, uh, the separation of Lower and Upper Canada, and more recently, the separation from, uh, of Quebec from Canada. We seem to have always been in conflict, like brothers fighting over the TV remote. We fought over land and over power in the past. Yes, in the past, in the 18th century, when people were uneducated and naive, when kings and queens created wars for their own benefits, when people were convinced that violence was the only solution. In other words, when people were unreasonable. I strongly believe that this conflict is a long-lasting debate over who is better, when in reality, nobody is. We only are different, and as a mature, civilized society of the 21st century, we should put aside our ego. But this is easy to say and hard to do. Nationalism is something that has long been ingrained in our brains for survival. This is an evolutionary trait. We convince ourselves that our clan is better than the opposing one. We unite, we unite under a single banner and reject foreigners in an objective to stay strong and united. This idea of survival should now be gone because the conflict between French and English people has now, now come to a fight of cultures instead of a fight for survival. And I don't think I am alone when I say that we are pr pretty fortunate to live in Quebec. The, econ the economy is not disastrous compared to the rest of the world. We do not live through wars every day going to school. I know that whenever I'm hungry, I can go buy poutine or smoked meat <laughs> while enjoying some good Quebec folklore music or some good Anglophone music maybe because ang uh, English music does sound better when sang. But French has a better array of words. So which music is better? By the numbers, Anglophone music sells better. But that is explainable by the simple fact that there are more English-speaking people on Earth. In fact, it is the international language. So should French-speaking Quebecers change to English since it is a more widespread and useful language? Well, in the world, Francophones are, are outnumbered, but in Quebec, they represent 78% of the population, and many governmental attempts have been made to preserve the language in Quebec, with, for example, the Bill 101. This bill created restrictions to Anglophone schools and promoted French commercialization in an effort to surround people of French and keep the language alive. This can sound like a bad thing, but the French language has been in a constant decrease, decrease, while English has been in a constant increase. The point is not to attack English-speaking Quebecers, and that is something they need to understand. That Francophones are afraid of losing their culture and language, and that it is understandable for them to have a feeling of pride. Both cultures can be proud. Being proud of yourself does not mean you are necessarily shaming another. This sounds all good for now, but one major problem now comes into play. Communication. Salut. Hello. What, if, what happens if two people meet and neither of them speaks the, la the language of the other? I have, uh, or what if both speak both languages? Which language should take over? I have an idea. First, we should introduce ourselves in our most comfortable language. So for me, it would be French. If the other person does not seem to understand because he, he is not bilingual, then don't take it personally and start talking in English. This is where your bilingual education comes into play. This goes both ways, though. If you are bilingual, you should give the, the courtesy to the other of speaking the language they are most comfortable in. Now, if both people b speak both languages, nothing stops you from asking what language that they prefer speaking in. This will first make this, the, them see how kind you are and, for asking, and only a friendly conversation will follow, I promise. Maybe one day everybody will be bilingual, and this issue will no, no, no longer be a problem. But for now, let's make an effort. I myself have many English uncles that I truly appreciate as much as my uh, French-speaking uncles, because in the end, they are family. My own father speaks better in English than in French. 
But in his mind, there never was a question of which was better. It simply was a tool for him, as it is for me during this presentation. I embrace this part of me, or both parts of me, English and French, because both bring their benefits. I can probably say I am a French Quebecer who has that sweet Quebecois accent when I speak in English. And I can also say that my career opportunities are, big, are greater because of my English education. And above those, both languages offered me the opportunity to communicate, to socialize, and to make friends of both cultures. So today, I hope I helped you see how we can coexist and how we are stronger together. Let's appreciate this great, great place we live in, and let's live in harmony in this great province called Quebec. Merci. Thank you.